Today we're checking out my backpacking gear loadout for 2023. That's next. I've hiked close to a thousand miles and I'm constantly testing out new gear and swapping things out for things that better suit my needs while also striving to go lightweight. While my gear is always changing, here's what I'm using for 2023 backpacking season. This gear loadout is not exactly ultra light, but it does get close to it while also being fully comfortable and it allows me to be able to carry my camera gear as well as some fishing gear. If you're interested in any of this gear, I will have links in the description below. Let's start off with my big three. I've I've used quite a few backpacks over the years, but for 2023, I'm testing out and using the new Hyperlite Unbound 40. I like this pack because it has a few extra additions from the Southwest and Junction series that I've used in the past. The roll top is very nice. It allows me to expand it when I do take more gear and also then compress it down when I take less gear. It can also compress low enough to be able to be a day pack when I am making a jot out into mountain peaks. It is lightweight, but still has a frame. I chose the black version, which is 150 denier over the white version, which is 50 denier. So it's more abrasive resistant than the white one, and it doesn't show dirt or stains as much. Attached to the back of the strap, I do have this peak design strap here to hold my camera as I'm walking. I also have this Hyperlite mountain gear uh, pocket here that attaches to my shoulder strap. In here, I have my phone. I also also have my Hyperlite Mountain Gear wallet and my AirPods and my keys when I'm out hiking. For the shelter, I'm once again taking my Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Li. This has been my favorite tent I've ever used so far. It's super lightweight and made of Dyneema, so it's not going to absorb water or sag. It's also very roomy to where I can fit another person if needed. I did add a liner inside, which makes it a hybrid double wall tent to reduce condensation. You also have an option to make it a freestanding tent by adding trekking poles on the bottom so it really enables it to be pretty versatile that you can set it up on pretty much any surface. I use eight Easton aluminum nano stakes to anchor it down and store those in a small DCF bag. I also have a polycro ground sheet to give some extra protection to it. I store all of it into this Hyperlite Mountain Gear small pod. It's made of DCF and allows it to be waterproof as well inside my pack without needing a bag liner. These are also pretty nice because it helps maintain structure while also keeping gear you're organized. For my sleep system, I keep it all in here in my large Hyperlite Mountain Gear pod so it does keep it nice and organized and waterproof as well. My quilt of choice is the UGQ Bandit 20 degree quilt. It is 850 down and it's plenty warm and compressible and in the hotter times I can go ahead and unbutton it and use it more like a blanket than a quilt. I pair my quilt with the Outdoor Vitals Mummy Liner. This is a really nice thing. It's really soft to the skin, uses micro D polyester and it also allows me to keep things nice and clean. It's easier to clean this and wash it as opposed to washing a sleeping bag. My pillow of choice is a Sea to Summit Eros Premium Pillow. This is super comfortable. It allows you also to dial in your comfort by making micro adjustments to let out air as well. I pair my pillow with the Goose Feet Down pillowcase. The pillow just slides on in here and on the top I have three ounces of down that really make this extra soft and comfortable. One of the best Best investments I've had into my sleep system. It's a much better option in my opinion than getting the Sea to Summit down pillow because you have much more down in here and it's much more comfortable as well. My mattress of choice is the Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite. This is in the regular mummy size and it's served me well over the last few years. It has a good amount of durability, warmth, but is also lightweight. For food storage, I use the Hilltop Packs DCF food bag. This is the large here. I can fit up to five days of food in here. I also store my cook system in there as well. To hang my bag, I also have 50 feet of Ultra Glide Bear Line that is wrapped around my Hilltop's Pack cord winder. And I also have a Hilltop's Pack mini carabiner. And together, these allow me to hang my food bag. When I know I'm gonna be in more bear prone areas that don't have many tree options to hang a food bag, I do take my Yursac 
Major XL. I can also fit about five days of food in this and it's a bit more bear resistant materials and you don't need large trees to hang it high up as well. However, I do go into areas that require bear canisters quite often. So depending on how many days I'll be out and the amount of food I'll need, if I'm going to one to two days, I will take the Bear Vault 425 bear canister here. However, if I'm going out for longer days, up to six days, I will take this one here. This is the Barricade Weekender from Wild Ideas. It is carbon fiber and it is the lightest bear box option that you can get out there, but they're not cheap at all. For my cook system, my stove of choice is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. And I like this because one, you have more of a surface here that you're able to use. And uh, this allows you to also put a pot and not just use it for boiling water, but you can also use it to cook on. It has a regulator also and an igniter here. So it is very nice to use if you're cooking as well in the, out in the back country. And since I often catch fish and cook it, uh, this is the stove that I'll be taking rather than just a BRS stove, which is mainly only good to boil water. I also carry a Bic mini lighter just in case the igniter on my stove fails. My pot is the Tokes Titanium 650 pot also with a case. This is a titanium pot so it's real lightweight. It's also a good size for boiling water for one dehydrated meal and it also doubles up as a cup for tea or coffee. My utensil of choice is a Sea to Summit Alpha Light Spork. This is actually titanium so it's real lightweight. It's a long handle version, which is nice for when I'm eating out of a bag, I don't have to get food on my hand. My water system is the Katadyne B free water filter with a one liter bag. And I also use these smart water bottles together. These are very lightweight and I like the B free because it has a faster flow and it's also lighter than my Sawyer and Canuck uh, water bladder that I used. And depending on the availability of water will determine how many of these smart water bottles I take with me. My ditty bag is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Cinch Bag. This is a size medium. I like to keep my electronics, anything else I want quick access to and for them to stay dry. Inside of here, I have my small Cutco pocket knife. This has a few small blades, but also small scissors built in. This comes in handy when I need to make patches or cut gauze or tape. This has been discontinued, so Cutco, please bring this back. It's a really nice item. I also take the Rawology Mini Cork Ball. This is to massage my legs and back after a nice hard hike. I also have a smaller pair kit to patch things up. I also bring this Flextel 2X Tiny Pump with light. This is really nice for when I'm out in the back country, I need to blow up my mattress, or if I wanna provide a little bit of light inside my tent. The light of choice for this year is the new Nike Core NU25 UL headlamp. It's 400 lumens and it's a nice upgrade over the previous model. The power bank I will use is a Nightcore NB10000 UL power bank. This has 10,000 milliamps and it is very nice and lightweight. If I need more power and need something like 20,000 milliamps out there, I will just take another one of these as opposed to getting the 20,000 milliamp because two of these is lighter than the one 20,000 milliamp in new power bank. I take three mini cords with me. One is a mini lightning port. The other one is a mini USB type C and the other one is a mini micro USB. So all these three will charge all my electronics that I have. Let's talk about what I take for my hygiene and safety. I store everything in this small Ziploc bag. In it, I have the Deuce of Spades number two ultralight trowel. I also use the Cluo Clean Ultralight Bidet. It integrates with my smart water bottle. I also bring Wissy Wipes, and these are wipes that come in tablet form. You just add some water and then they expand up into normal cloths. I use also the Garage Grown Gear Ultralight Thumbprint Handled Toothbrush. Rather than bringing a tube of toothpaste, I bring the Huppy toothpaste tabs. These are little tabs that you can just go ahead and chew on and then you have toothpaste in your mouth and you can take the exact number for the amount of days you'll be out. I also take this green goo foot care slave. This helps prevent blisters and athlete's foot. I also bring this Adventure Medical UL Emergency Kit. This is the 0.5 version. It's real lightweight, easy to carry, has a lot of the essentials that I need in here. I did add a few things to this like a tick remover from 
from Hilltop's packs, Uncle Bill's silver gripper tweezers, and I also have some Luco tape for blisters and other needs. Let's talk about clothing. First, what I'm wearing while I'm hiking. My top is the Outdoor Research Astroman Sun Hoodie. I really hate sunscreen, so this is 50 SPF. It's lightweight, but also quick drying. My bottoms are the Outdoor Research Ferrosi Convertible Pants. These are super lightweight and breathable and have a DWR finish. I can also make them into shorts when it's really hot. My socks of choice are the Darn Tough Quarter Socks and under those I have Njinji Liner Socks that help prevent blisters. The shoes I'll be using this year is the Ultra Olympus 4. Last few years I used the Lone Peaks and I want something with a bit more cushion on them and the Olympus definitely fits the bill here. They also have better treads for allowing better grip. My hat is the North Face Horizon hat. It's lightweight, breathable, fast drying, and has a turbo dry sweatband. The rest of my clothing fits in this Hyperlight Mountain Gear pod here so it keeps everything nice and dry. Inside of it, I have the Appalachian Gear Company All Packa Hoodie. This is a really nice hoodie to wear around camp when it starts to get dark. It's also nice to take the chill off on brisk morning hikes. It's lightweight, it's breathable, antimicrobial, so it won't stink very easily. I also bring my Appalachian Gear Company All Packa Beanie. This keeps my head and ears warm. My rain jacket is the North Face Summit L5 Storm Jacket. This is a rain jacket that is super lightweight. It's good at blocking wind too. My puffy jacket is the original Ghost Whisper Jacket. This is warmer than the new Ultralight version and it's lighter than the new Ghost Whisper 2 version. After a tough day's hike and I'm all sweaty and wet, I do like to let my clothes dry out, so I carry some backup clothes once I get to camp. I carry an extra pair of darn tough socks and Njinji liners. I also have some Outdoor Research Echo Boxer briefs. These are one of the lightest, most airy briefs I've worn. I also take an Outdoor Research Echo Long Sleeve shirt. This is super lightweight, and since it's a camp shirt, it doesn't really need to be a hoodie. I also take my Outdoor Research Ferrosi 7-inch shorts, and these are lightweight, nice to wear at camp, or I can even use them to dip into the lake. I also take my Shama Warrior sandals to let my feet dry out at camp. I can also use these at river crossings. And if something ever happens to my shoes, these can also be used to hike out on the trails. Other accessories that I take with me is the Bin Invisi Bug Head Net. This helps keep the mosquitoes and bugs out. I also take the Pack Towel Ultra Light in the hand size, and this is really good to dry off if you take a dip in the lake, and it's also good to get condensation off on the tents. It's lightweight and dries quickly as well. For safety, I also take the Garmin InReach 2. This gives you some extra assurance while you're out in the backcountry. If emergency happens, you can contact people in need. It also helps me stay in touch with friends and family. This pairs nice with my watch as well, which is the Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire watch. On this watch, I have GPS, I have maps, and it has a much longer battery than any of the iWatches out there. When I know I'm gonna be hiking big miles throughout the day and not going to be spending tons of time at camp, I will bring my Thermarest Z-Seat sit pad. This is really nice because it's super lightweight but also offers some nice comfort to where I can sit down on it rather than a rock or a log and it also does a good job being as like a little doormat at the entrance of my tent. So this is my typical three season backpacking loadout. Pretty good considering I have a full change of clothes. The base weight comes out to be 12.45 pounds. So overall, not exactly ultralight, but it does get close to it while being fully comfortable. However, given the circumstances and the conditions, there are times when I will take additional things in exchange for some other things I have. So if I know I'm gonna be spending a bit more time at camp, instead of my sit pad, I will bring my Helinox Chair Zero. This is a very comfortable and lightweight chair. It allows me to sit back and recline and get weight off my feet after a tough day's hike. Yes, it's a luxury item, but if I'm spending more time at the camp, it is worth the wait. When I do take this, instead of the sit pad, it does add 15 ounces to the overall base weight. Now, if I'm expecting colder weather and snow and also climbing some mountain peaks, I will swap out a few items. Instead of my North Face rain shell, I will take my Patagonia Storm Tin jacket. This is a really nice shell that has more durability and weather resistance. It's also great for snowy conditions 
and for climbing peaks as far as the durability is concerned. I would also swap out my Ghost Whisper jacket if I'm expecting temperatures 35 and below and I would take instead my Arcteryx Cerium LT. This is a much warmer jacket and I'm able to take this down into the teens pretty comfortably and it only weighs three ounces more than the Ghost Whisper. I'll also take these Smart Wool gloves. These are nice to take the chill off during the day while you're hiking and also keep your hands nice and warm while you're at camp. They are made of Marina wool so they are pretty breathable and odor resistant. Another thing I would take is my Unigear Micro Spikes. These are really good traction devices for your shoes for icy and snowy conditions. I've used these the last two years and they still held up pretty good. Now, if I know I'm gonna be camping next to rivers, streams, and lakes, I will take a fishing gear setup as well. My reel is the Fluger President XT. It's in a size 20 spinning rod here. I pair this with Berkley Vanish Fluorocarbon two pound test line. My pole is a Cast King telescopic spinning rod. I like this because it's lightweight, but it's really compact. So when I store it on the side of my bag, it's not sticking out and it's not gonna get caught on branches or anything like that. I also take this mini tackle box. It all has some spinners, spoons, and jigs that are necessary for trout. When I do know I'm gonna be camping next to lakes or streams, I will take my Tokes fry pan, 145 millimeter titanium fry pan. This is light, but also decent size to cook brook trout as well. I will take my bug out knife here from Benchmade, and this is long enough to be able to cut and clean fish while also being really lightweight. Together, these items only add 15.5 ounces to the overall base weight. So this is all the gear that I'm taking for my three season lightweight backpacking for 2023. I will have a link in the description to all the gear listed in this video if you are interested in those. I will also put a link to my lighter pack page as well. If there's any gear that you would like a more in-depth review of, please let me know and I'll try to do that for you. Also, let me know what you thought of my gear loadout. What would you take and what would you not? What are some things you would swap out and take instead? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more backpacking content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.